Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Pause and paint. Normally I don't do pause and paint videos live. They're for funsies, but today we're doing it live. And today we're going to paint a poinsettia. So today's tutorial is sort of like a paint and chat pause let's we're getting ready to have this beautiful Christmas holiday in a couple days and I just kind of wanted to come in today live with something a little on the lighter side so today's tutorial is going to be a pause and paint poinsettia line and wash so we're gonna have some fun and I'm gonna talk about some things along the way and answer some questions that I have been receiving about different things via email, direct message, things like that. So if you do have a question today, put it in the chat with the word question um, and I'm gonna answer it. So I see everybody popping in. Hello, hi Stan. Hello, Catherine, Judith, Donna, Kathy. Rhonda, hey Barbara, a lot of people popping in today, super fun. Didn't know how many of you would pop in today because you know, we're a couple days away from Christmas Eve and Christmas. So I'm gonna try to keep this tutorial today to an hour, but we are going to, hi Irma, we are, are going to, um, today's all about just painting, talking about watercolor, talking about color pencils. So again, hi friends who are just now popping in, I'm Lisa Hetrick. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Okay, all right friends, we're gonna get started. Now, all of the supplies I'm using are linked down below in the description with the exception of the watercolor because I'm gonna talk about the different, I'm gonna talk about watercolor today and I'm gonna talk about what you can use. You can use whatever watercolor is in your stash. If you're on my email list, you received the poinsettia in your, let's just go ahead to the overhand cam. You received the poinsettia drawing in your email yesterday. So if you're painting along with me, wahoo, that's exciting. Um, if not, if you're painting this later after the tutorial, that's great too. But here is the drawing and we are going to paint. I'm going to walk through this abstract kind of line and wash painting today. And we're just gonna have some fun. And it may or may not look like this when we're done. Okay, so quick run through the supplies. I am using some Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I have a watercolor set that I, this is just my little travel Da Vinci watercolor set. I am going to be using Da Vinci paints today. We're using a permanent rose color. We're gonna be using some greens. We're gonna be using some blues. We'll see what happens. We'll see what shakes out. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for our paper today, I normally use Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor for cold press paper for our paper crafting projects. Today, I'm going to use hot press. Now, what's the difference, you ask? This is 100% cotton. <laughs> Nobody asked, actually. Um, but you might ask. So, what is the difference between the hot press and the cold press paper? The difference is one is smooth and one has texture. So the cold press paper has a texture to it. You can feel it. The hot press paper is, is smoother and we're using this paper today as a smoother texture. I'm gonna show it to you. Because I'm using colored pencils, I'm also using some white, bleed proof white. So you can see that it's super, super smooth. Now let's pull out a piece of the Ready Cut watercolor um, cold press paper. So the cold press has a little bit more of a texture. You can see the texture on the back too. And this is a little bit more of a smooth paper. There's also a little bit of a difference in this particular brand in the color. So a little bit of a brighter white in the cold press and a little bit more of a yellow tone, a little bit more yellow coming out in this paper. And the reason why I like to use hot press paper with watercolor projects like this is it isn't super, super washy, 
but we are going to be using colored pencils with it and I'm using some other mediums with it this bleed proof white and it's kind of got that smooth feel to it and I'm really kind of controlling a little bit what we're doing today with our watercolor okay so let me just go ahead and put this aside and we'll get going hi Kathy just popped in hello I am really surprised at all of our friends that are popping in today okay let's go ahead and let's take my face out so we can talk about some of the brushes I've got I have I'm using some of the Princeton Heritage brushes I've been using these a lot they're listed down below this is a big honking round brush a number 10 and this is a three really tiny tiny brush I'm going to be using that for our um, for some of the dots that I'm going to be making now the colored pencils in the description I listed some of the Faber-Castell polychromo colored pencil sets right now because they are on like they're like on a massive special like two of them that I listed two of them that I listed in the description are like 50% off right now so they're phenomenal deals um, on Amazon so if you're at all interested in colored pencils and you haven't tried them out yet I like the Faber-Castell polychromos I like them I've had them for a really long time they last a really long time and they the color payout is really intense I also have the watercolor pencils um, I love Prismacolor too don't get me wrong love those too but these are the ones I'm using today so the colors I'm using are a dark red I've got a, a pine green and I have a dark indigo so I have three colors for this line and wash hello Deborah just popped in also friends I have a cold again I just got over this cold like a week ago and there's a little bit of a cold coming back so that's my little bit of sinusy thing that's popping up oh oh Donna just popped in with a question let me just pop these up let me pop that question up Donna um, Lisa do you use black paper along with metallic paints I haven't seen all of your tutorials so forgive me if you do Donna I do have a tutorial on this channel um, it was back in 2020 where I did black watercolor paper and metallics it's in 2020 and it was the color focus of that tutorial was turquoise so I after the live I will go back in and I will add that link to the description Donna so that you can find it but thanks for bringing that up because the black metallic the black watercolor paper that I love from Canson it just performs really really well and I'll bring that out into an upcoming tutorial um, with metallics so super fun okay let's get going on our tutorial today and I'm going to answer some questions along the way I've gotten a couple questions so they're probably just gonna I'm just gonna end up saying question and then just kind of popping up now today I wanted to do this pause and paint you're welcome Donna I wanted to do this pause and paint today um, just and I'm not gonna put some music on but I just kind of flipping it around a little bit into a tutorial so today we are going to do this line and wash poinsettia so you can see that this poinsettia has um, it has some shape it's got form you can see the petals but I'm not really honing in on a lot of the details I'm just giving you enough um, enough of the shape and the form simply by how I've placed color in and around it so doing some negative painting in this area and I'll walk you through that and doing some um, line and wash with our colored pencil so let's just let's just get going I'm gonna end up taking drinks of water too along the way so okay friends if you're painting along um, you know and you have questions along the way don't hesitate to ask if you're not painting along and you're painting this afterwards because you've got this in the in the email that I sent out just you can always come back and ask questions in the chat 
and I'll answer them. And yes, it is me that are that is answering them. If excuse me, if I blow my nose a little bit. All right, so I am going to take. I'm going to start with the dark red colored pencil, and I'm going to start to outline with kind of a medium pressure. I'm going to outline the shape of the petals in this poinsettia. Now, some of the petals that I have in this poinsettia, we're going to edit out. And you can see this whole center where I have the dots. We're going to be editing that out too. Merry Christmas, Kathy. Okay, we're going to pop in and I'm just going in. I've got a medium pressure. And the reason why I'm using colored pencils instead of watercolor pencils is because I'm going to wet this whole paper and the color pencil isn't going to move. It's going to resist the water and it's going to retain the shape. Okay, I've got this petal right here, so I'm just going to come in. You can see I'm following around. These two petals that I have in the poinsettia, I am going to, I'm probably going to edit one of them out. Let's just come in, follow the lines. When you're doing these line and wash paintings, it's really helpful to kind of start out with a good drawing or a good, a good line art illustration that you're working with. If you are using a stamp, see these two petals right here? I'm going to totally edit them out. I'm not going to use them. I actually don't want them in the drawing. I should have just taken them out of the original drawing, but I didn't. We're just going to edit them out by painting over them. I've got this here, and you see this, there's two petals in here. I'm going to edit them out too, simply by not putting any focus on them. I'm going to come around here. There's a petal in here. I'm going to edit that out. There's a lot of space in here that I just want to create some negative space. Again, the point of this tutorial is not to come in for precision of petals. We're coming in with this line and wash look. We've got this feeling that there's texture and dimension happening here, but we're not going for detail or a lot of, um, a lot of veins and a lot of realistic details. I'm coming in and doing this line and wash to kind of help me. I've got this pedal. I got this pedal right here. We're going to we're going to keep this one. And we're going to keep this one right here. And you can see like my, the pencil for medium pressure. I'm, I'm a left-hander. It might be a little bit different for you with the right hand. I'm not completely like choked up on the pencil. I'm kind of back here a little bit cuz that's comfortable for me to get some medium pressure. And I want that medium pressure because I really do want these lines to show up. So this line, this line, this line, I'm going to edit those out. I'm going to ultimately cover them up with, eh, let's see, let's put this one in. I'm going to ultimately cover them up with some watercolor. I'm going to come in with this pine green and we're going to do our two petals right here. Now, my pencils are pretty sharp. Oops, that one was really sharp, and you can see I just sharpened this right before we went live. My pencils are pretty sharp, and with the smooth paper, the colored pencil really does glide along the hot press paper. So if you if you're doing using your stamped images and you want to use your colored pencils. I've got a bunch of tutorials on the channel for colored pencils with our stamped images. Last year we did a whole, I did a whole holiday series with watercolor pencils. Kind of went over that a little bit and I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in and do some light. No, I'm not. I changed my mind. I was going to come in and do a little bit of veins, but I'm going to do that afterwards. So I've got this line. This looks like a hot mess right now. And like if you were <laughs> doing this part and you all of a sudden just start to freak out, 
don't freak out. We all we did was just kind of outlined our image. And now we're going to go in, add our watercolor in a super duper washy way. And then I'm going to go in again and add some details. So some of the techniques that I'm going to do next, washy watercolor, wet into wet watercolor, and I'm going to talk about lifting, pulling some of that watercolor out to create highlights in our petals. Okay. I'm getting a little bit nerdy, nerdier than I thought I was going to get. So we're nerding out a little bit. That's what's happening today. So I hope you don't mind. All right. I've got a big honking brush. This is just a big wash brush. And the reason why, um, oh, Catherine just asked a question. The reason why I'm using this is because I'm going to use it to cover my entire page with water. So Catherine just asked me a quick question. Please show the colored image again. I lost which leaves should be green. It's these two right here. So these two right here. So Catherine, sounds like you're painting along with me. Okay. These two right here. You could make these two green if you wanted to. Or you could even make that one up there green if you wanted to. But I've just got these two green right here. Just kind of creating that little triad in this composition. Okay. All right. I'm coming in. I've got some water and a little bit of glass jar here, and I'm just getting my brush. You're welcome, Catherine. All right. A couple things I'm going to do. I've got this flower sack towel. Okay. And I love flower sack towels. I bake a lot of bread and I use flower sack towels for baking. But I've got one and they they clean up really nice. And the reason why I'm using this is because I'm going to lay this whole piece on top of it. My whole piece of watercolor paper on top of it. And I've got a, my wash brush and I'm just going to go over this and I'm just wetting my paper. Okay. The bristles are kind of soft, so if you have a stiffer brush, that would be great. See my petals that I'm editing out? Now, because I printed them on some uh, an inkjet printer, they're just going to disappear. So I'm going to come in. The color that I'm going to use is Permanent Rose. Permanent Rose is like one of my favorite colors. Red Rose Deep would be a nice one, or Alizarin Crimson would be more of a darker, darker red. I'm going to use Permanent Rose, Quinacridone. I'm going to come in, I'm getting my medium brush, my number 10, and I'm just going to get a nice amount of this color. Look, I've just got a big pool of it right here. And I'm just going to start to drop this in where my water was. And I'm not really super concerned about it going into the greens, about it going into any of the places, because I'm just, we're doing some wet into wet and I'm just dropping my color in. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of my green and do the same thing. I think I'm going to start off with the green gold, drop some green gold here, drop some green gold here. Now my paper's wet, my brush is wet, everything is wet. Everything is just honking, honking wet. I should have just wet. Um, one thing I did not do, and I should have, was wet my watercolor. Got some Joyce's Mother Green here. Now I'm using Da Vinci Paints. This is something that you guys have seen me use many times before. Now this kind of looks a little frightening, right? It's a little bit of a hot mess. And I'm, I'm gonna spray it even more. I'm just getting everything like super wet because this is kind of an abstract, this is an abstract painting that we're doing. Now, you can see that the lines are still there. I'm gonna come in just take a little bit of this tissue and just kind of sop up some of the edges. 
but I do want things to move a little bit. So see how I'm just kind of moving it out? And we are going to be doing some drying in between. But I've got that first kind of washy layer. If you want drips, like you can always just wet it and let it drip. Like watch, we'll do a drip. Like look at that. That's kind of cool. But I kind of took a <laughs> took away from, I really did water it down a little bit too much. So I'm going to add some back in right here. Super washy. Add some of this back in because I let some of it drip. Okay, digging it. Digging it. Boom, 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 boom. <coughs> All right, excuse me, friends. Now, I'm taking a quick drink. Sorry about that. Now, one of the questions I received recently was, was with wet into wet watercolor, how do you pull away some of the watercolor if it's pulled up and you want to create highlights? So this is part of creating the definition of the petals in our composition, but we are not focused on every little detail in the petal. Remember, we are going for this kind of abstract, washy, ethereal kind of look. So lifting. And I've done lifting before on the channel, but we're going to lift some of that watercolor away. So I've got a concentration. I'm actually going to come in, drop a little bit more color here. I've got a concentration, pools of color in a couple spots here. I'm going to come in and lift away some color, like right around edges of here. So coming in with my brush, my brush is... You can see I'm going back and forth and just kind of drying out my brush. It's wet, but it's not sopping wet. And I'm lifting that watercolor away. Just pulling some of that away. Actually, so I'm bringing back some of the highlights. We're going to pull some of this out here. We're going to pull some of it out here. And you notice I'm just kind of hovering around areas where I have my line work. This is kind of a little bit too much right there. I don't want to get rid of too much. Remember, it looks kind of wet right now, but we are going to dry it in between and do some glazing. I want to pull some highlights here. So I'm lifting out up and out and away. I'm going to pull some highlights here. And this is just kind of random. And you notice that I'm pulling away color around edges of petals just to kind of bring back some of those highlights and I'm going back and forth here and brushing brushing off some of the excess water I actually want to put in I'm just going to drop in a little bit of green gold here <laughs> Barbara just said, I like it just as it is, really abstract. I know, this is kind of cool. Like, you could stop right here if you wanted to, dry it, add a little bit of, um, of, the, of the bleed proof white, and you would kind of be good to go with a really abstract line of wash. But you can see I'm just kind of noodling around with this. I'm pulling some of this away from our center. So I'm just pulling some of that color out in a way just to create some highlights in a very, very random way. I'm going to come in right here. I feel like I need to pull a little bit of here. So this was one of the questions I received was how do I get, you know, how do I pull away some of the excess watercolor when you kind of feel like you've overdone it a little bit. And that's how you do it. Okay, still very wet and washy. Gonna come in. We're gonna come in and I'm gonna dry this with a heat tool. So this is our first layer and we're gonna dry it and you're gonna see how the watercolor is fade. It's gonna fade back significantly. And that's what happens with all watercolor, all watercolor brands. It'll fade back and it'll lose some of that vibrancy that we see here 
when it's wet. So let's just go ahead and get this dry. And then we're gonna come in and start working on like the second layer, the third layer, and some of the negative painting. Okay. And I'm gonna leave some of it, some of it wet, but not sopping wet like it is right now. Let's see, just kind of moving around. I'm not gonna love this right here later. And I know myself, so I'm just going to go in and just kind of move that around a little bit. You can see it's already starting to fade back. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop heating it because you can, like, overcook it a little bit. You can see it's a little bit wet, but that's okay. All right, we're going to go in and we're going to start doing a little bit of negative painting. So this was another question that I recently received. And it was, in general, just like, what is negative painting? So in this composition, negative painting is coming in inside or around the areas and adding darker colors or shadow colors to help bring the petals in this case the poinsettia petals to look like they're coming more forward and this is this can be done in a very detailed way or what we're doing here is in a very abstract way i'm going to be coming in with darker shadow colors of blue i'm going to use a stormy blue and an indigo to come around these petals and just kind of bring them to life a little bit so the entire painting I'm getting super nerdy here. The entire painting has that abstract feel, but we're going to, using the negative painting, you get to feel those edges happening in the petals. So see how the edges are coming and popping out a little bit because we've added some darker shadows there. That helps give a little bit, it gives the eye some attention to the detail in the petals, but we still have a nice abstract look. Okay. All right, let's go in, and the color I'm going to use, I've got a stormy blue and a Prussian blue. I'm going to use these two colors. The reason why I like this stormy blue is because it granulates a little bit, okay? So you can see it here. You can see how it's kind of granulating. Granulating watercolors are like one of my super favorites. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because that was another question that I recently received. So let me get some stormy blue going here. This is a Da Vinci stormy blue. It's a mix. It's a color. Oops, just stuck my brush in there. That color is really nice. I really, really like it. Now, my brush is wet. My paper is dry. My hand is wet. Let's get that off. And I'm going to come in. It's just taking my brush get that point. I'm going to come in and just hug the edge of the line and I'm applying some paint. It's pretty intense. This is our, this will be my, um, this is more of a hundred percent like milk feel. There was a little bit of water happening there. So I'm using this color and now my brush is clean. It's wet, but not super wet. And I'm just gonna use the color I have and I'm pulling it out a little bit. Now, that color, that stormy blue is mixing a little bit with that rose. We get a little bit of our purple undertones because we're doing a little bit of color mixing. Now we've got the intensity of that color right here where those petals are meeting. So we're starting to see that shape happening. Now this outer edge, just cleaning my brush and I'm just feathering it out, feathering it out to the outer edge, letting it mix and do its thing. If you have a little bit like too much or a little pull of it, you can always just pull it away. But look at that, it's got that stormy um, feel to it, that really like midnight kind of feel to it. I love it. All right, we're gonna come around. 
we're going to come around and do the same thing over here. So my brush, again, I'm still using my big number 10, but remember that brush comes to a really nice point. I'm going to get some of my pigment here. Let's get some of my watercolor. So this tutorial is turning out to be a little bit different than my other paws and paints where I kind of paint and we don't talk. <laughs> this is really kind of turned into more of a tutorial and I kind of wanted it to be that way. A little gift of grace before the holidays, before all the next couple days get a little bit busy with family and friends. Okay. And just kind of give you a nice little tutorial. We are probably going to run over an hour. Hopefully not. We'll see. I'm just feathering this out a little bit with that negative painting. I'm just going to drop a little bit more right in here. Just kind of let that do its thing in the water. And you can see I've got some pools of color happening where some areas are are wet. I'm not really going to worry about that. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to move over to this area and then I'm going to move to this area or maybe I'll start in this area. I'm going to do the same thing with the stormy blue. So my brush is wet. I'm picking up quite a bit of pigment here. And I'm going to come in and just kind of hug this area. Just applying, this is like a hundred percent, like a whole milk. You can see that's a lot of pigment, a lot of pigment. All right, clean off my brush really good. Just kind of using my towel here to just kind of, whoops, roll out that extra color, uh, extra water, not super wet. I don't want it to be washy. I just want to start to feather out that color a little bit and let it run and do its thing. So having some fun with this. Ooh, love that. <laughs> Barbara just said it's scary. It is kind of scary. So I am using a number 10 brush. If you feel like you need to use a smaller brush, you could always use a smaller brush. Now this is, see all my little hard lines here, I'm not loving that. So look, just going to add a little water and let it just kind of fall away. But I want some intensity of color here. I want this right in here to be dark because that gives us that negative, positive, helps the leaf, the leafery pop, helps the petals pop. All right. Now it feels pretty intense right now, but remember watercolor fades back when it dries. I'm just going to let that kind of fall away to the edges. Let this fall away to the edges. Let it fall away. Okay, we're going to go up here. I think I really like, you see how I'm just turning my composition around because that's how I like to do it. I'm going to come up here because we've got some interesting lines here between our leafery petal and between our two poinsettia petals. It does make the poinsettia pop, doesn't it, Barbara? It totally does. I'm going to come in with this whole milk, come in with that stormy blue. And I'm coming in, I'm choking up on the barrel here of my brush. I'm going to come around, follow the line work that I've done here with my petals. Just kind of feathering this out. I think I'll just come around here. Now this feels scary and harsh, but that's okay. Cleaning off my brush. Cleaning off my brush, getting it nice and super clean. Now I am doing this technique without adding a lot of detail. We're kind of doing an abstract here that's super washy. I'm not adding a lot of detail 
into the inside of the petals when we're finished. Look at that intensity. It's already making these petals pop. Love that. Feels a little intense, might feel a little overwhelming right now at this part, but resist the urge to feel uncomfortable, okay? Because right now everything is coming, right now we're in like a second layer with the negative painting and everything feels maybe a little uncomfortable because there's no detail technically happening, but we're going to keep going and we're gonna make it happen. Okay, all right, let's go in. I'm gonna come in with a little bit, I'm gonna stick with my Stormy Blue, let this be. Let's go in and, and dry this, just because. Now, the reason why I'm gonna go in and start to dry this Stormy Blue area here is because I'm going to start to go in and add more of the um, permanent rose, the rose color to the petals and add a layer of definition for our petals. And I don't want it to bleed. So I don't want it to be wet into wet. We are now working um, wet into dry. I want the paper to be dry each time I add a new layer. I hope that makes good sense. That also answers another question about adding layers that I recently received. So the question was, what is glazing? And glazing, you hear me talk about that a lot, is layering your colors one layer at a time, your watercolors, or if you're layering your colored pencils or watercolor pencils, but you're gonna dry that medium in between and then add the next layer. When you're doing that, it jacks up the luminosity and especially with watercolor, because watercolor is a transparent medium. So the more layers you add, the more light and luminosity you can bring to your painting. Okay, let's go ahead and dry. Okay, some of that was already getting dry because I was chatting so much. But look at, look at that definition that we have here from the negative painting. I can go in, I want, I'm hesitating a little bit, but we may be coming back and adding a little bit of negative painting into our center here. I'm gonna think about it. All right, first, now, we're gonna come in. Let me take a quick drink. Give everybody a moment to pause. I've got a couple things that I'm not loving, but I'm going to let it ride. So we've got some pools of color happening here. I actually kind of really like this one because um, the water, it kind of, it charged in to the color. And I kind of like that. We've got this little pool happening here. I'm going to work with what we have. So my brush is wet, paper's dry. I'm going to pick up some pigment, pick up some of that rose color, pick up quite a bit of it in like a whole milk. Brush is wet, paper's dry. I'm going to focus on some of these petals and adding some definition into the petals. So let's start with this petal right here. I'm going to hug this edge. So some petals are going to get my attention with more color. Some petals are not. The petals that are going to get more color and more attention are going to start to pop to the front. We've added the color there. Cleaning off my brush. You can see there's a lot of color here. And it's a pretty thick consistency. My brush is now clean, clear. I am just going to feather out that color. I'm going to go back and forth here and just kind of wipe off the excess. Keeping the brush wet and just pulling that color out a little bit. So that little kind of 
whole, that little bit of white that I had over there that I didn't like is going to just disappear. So I've got some intensity happening here and I also have some darks and lights. I'm going to come in and just going to pull away a little bit of what's happening there. Leave that as a little bit of a highlight and you can still see my line work with the color pencil. <coughs> Loving that. Okay, now we're going to move on. I'm kind of just going to move around a little bit. I'm going to draw some, I'm going to make some attention, bring some attention to this petal, the edge of this petal, because I'm going to end up doing some green, more green work in, in the leafery here. And it's going to create that illusion of some negative painting right in here. But first we're going to do our red petals. I'm going to do something here, 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 a little bit up here so I get a nice contrast and a little something right here. These two petals, we'll see. I think I'm just going to let them fall away. All right, let's come in, get some more of our rose color. Permanent rose is like one of my favorite colors in almost every single brand that I try. I do love this Da Vinci. You can see I'm just rolling my brush around in this color, getting a lot of pigment. All right, I'm gonna move down here. I'm gonna hug this edge. You can see I'm just adding the color. I'm painting it on, but I'm also using the line work that I'd already done here, just to kind as my guide, clean off my brush and just getting it it's still wet, it's just not sopping wet. I need that tip to be a little more wet. Then I'm going to feather this color out a little bit. Just drawing that out. If you feel like you have too much water on your brush, just dab it off. Just going to hug around that edge between this petal and this petal. This this is turning on. This. This uh, live is turning into like a full on tutorial. I didn't know it was going to get this way, but it did. And I'm kind of digging it. All right, loving that. Now, this feels a little bit, oops, got a little bit of a bloop of water. Let's take that off. This feels a little bit harsh, that line right there. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water and, and brush it away and brush it away. Okay, now I'm gonna let this petal dry. I'm gonna move over here and work this one. Okay, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna answer the net, the, I have a list of questions so um, that I received. So I'm just kind of answering them in a spot that I feel where it makes sense. All right, let's go around here. I'm going to hug this edge and just do the same thing I've done with these petals. Hug that edge a little bit. Now, one of the questions I recently received was, was about getting started in watercolor and picking, picking a brand to, um, to buy. So here's my, Here's my answer to that question. I always say you start with what, of course, fits your budget. But first, I'm going to feather this out a little bit. You can see I've got a little bit of water. I'm going to, that was a lot of water. I'm going to feather this out. And see, I want to preserve some of that white there. So I don't want to go into it too deep. So I'm cleaning my brush and getting some clean water and just kind of pulling the color that we have here. Ah, I'm going to leave that right there. Look at that white I'm digging that. Okay. Starting out with your watercolor and you're trying to decide what brand to go with. I always recommend spend more money on your paper first. Now we've talked about different papers on this channel. Um, in my watercolor wonderland class in crafterjoy.com in my online classroom, I have a whole module just on paper. Spend a little bit more on paper and get the 100% cotton paper. 
Any brand will do. Any brand that fits your budget, but focus on 100% cotton paper. We're using hot press 100% cotton today. I've used 100% cotton paper all the time. Start with the Strathmore if you want to. It's a lower end budget. It's a really nice 100% cotton paper. The reason why is you'll get better results when you're working with 100% cotton paper. Then with your paints, you can um, invest in a set of paints that fits your budget. And then over time, as you start to experiment more, and begin to get more comfortable. We're going to start, we're going to come right up here and start working on this petal. Get more comfortable with your watercolor paintings. You can invest in paint that costs a little bit more. Um, in my watercolor wonderland class, holy smokes, I have a lot of paint friends and it's because um, I teach and it's because this is what I do for a living and I'm naturally curious. I'm going to start to add a little bit of color just to the edge here and I'm going to come down and around here. I'm naturally curious about different brands. I've tested a lot of brands, a lot of different um, watercolors that are like student grade and artist grade and the difference between student grade and artist grade is that student grade has less pigment than artist grade. That's really the only difference. However, there are several brands where it's virtually undetectable the difference between their student and their artist grade. If you're just getting started out and you've not bought a watercolor set yet, and I recommend, I highly, highly recommend the Paul Rubens set. And I've talked about Paul Rubens on this channel before. It's, it is technically a student grade set, but it performs like an artist grade set. And the price is phenomenal. I think it's phenomenal. Um, so that is one that I recommend, especially for paper crafters, especially for hobbyists. I'm gonna pull some of this color away. I'm using Da Vinci paint right now and I absolutely love it. And here's why. It is an artist grade paint. It is made in the USA, California. Other brands that you'll hear or like Daniel Smith, um, pop in the chat, like what is your favorite brand? Everybody has a favorite. I'm gonna blow my nose. <sighs> Excuse me, friends. Um, everybody has a brand favorite. I am like what I like to call brand agnostic because every brand does something a little bit different. Uh, but you really don't need all the brands. Friends, you do not need every single watercolor brand that's out there. But I will recommend Paul Rubens if you're just getting started and especially for craft and hobbyists, okay? And then you can slowly upgrade. Um, I use a lot of different brands on this channel and when I'm using them, I talk about their properties and what makes them special or do this or do that or a little bit different. And hopefully that can help you along the way in making your choices. To answer and to bring that question to a close, you do work with the paper, spend more money on paper first, and then add um, budget to your paint. Start with a lower lower budget and get started. And then as you, you can upgrade over time. As you run out of a color, you can try a new brand, which is kind of fun. Okay. All right, so you can start to see we've got some definition in these four petals, and you can already start to see that they're coming forward, right? Everything's coming forward a little bit more. Now, let's go up here. I focus some attention here, so we've got that difference between that negative painting here and that petal. We're gonna come up here and come around and focus some attention on each side of this petal. We're on this side and on this side, and my highlights are gonna be in the center. Now. Friends, we're going to run over an hour. It's just going to be. Uh, so if you have to bug out, you can always watch this on the replay. Um, because this turned into a little bit more of a full-on class than it did just a pause and paint. And that's just kind of how it goes. A little gift of grace from me to you. Okay. 
Um, yeah. So pop in the chat with some of your favorite watercolor brands, especially like if you are painting with me, Kathy said, I love this. This poinsettias are my favorite. Thank you, Donna, for the beautiful sentiment. I'm going to come around here. If you're painting along with me, let me know what you're painting with. See, I'm coming around that edge. I'm going to come around this edge and I'm just kind of hugging that negative area. <laughs> it's okay. Donna said it's okay. All right, clean brush. And I'm just going to pull some of that color towards the center. And I'm taking off the excess. You can see I'm dabbing it off. Dabbing off the excess. Because I want to preserve what's happening here in the middle. And see that highlight that I've got going there? I've got some of that color. So this isn't like, remember, not a super realistic painting. This is a definitely a, an abstract painting, but we're using negative painting to kind of bring some of these petals forward. Now look what's already happening. This, how these petals are popping forward. And then we've got the petals behind them that I'm not going to give any attention to, but we've got that illusion of 3D-ness happening. Love it. Love it. Ah, Monica just asked a really great question. I'm going to pop this up. Let's pop that up. How do you know where to place the highlights? That's such a great question. And here's my answer. Okay. So when I'm approaching some a uh, painting like this, not realistic, I tend to want to put the highlights of the petal like in the middle or onto one side. So I'm focusing, you can see like in this petal, I focused my attention of the intensity of the color over on the left. And then I've got my highlights over here. I've got, I'm hugging the edge of what, this petal and I've got my highlights here. So start with that, hug an edge where two petals are meeting. So you're providing some definition and some intensity of color on this petal. Your highlights are over on the right, and then you'll be able to see where those two petals overlap, that there's um, some highlight on the petal underneath. Now, this is an accurate botanical technique. If you're looking for that accurate botanical technique with your paintings, and I'll give you some reference for that. So, okay. So Monica, some reference for that. And Donna, I see your question. I'll answer that next. Some reference for that. Anna Mason, she's an amazing, botanical, realistic watercolor artist. She's also here on um, YouTube. She also has an online classroom. She's an artist out of the UK. Amazing. I have followed her work for years. Also, for some more realistic, and she talks about highlights in her realistic floral paintings. Anna Bucurella. Bucurelli, I'm gonna, I know I botched the end of that end of that, but it's Anna Bucurelli, and she is a botanical artist. She also does a lot of really fun stuff with negative painting. Um, I'm more abstract, she's more realistic phenomenal. You've got to check her out. She's here on YouTube as well. Okay. Cheryl. Uh, no, Donna asked me, what is my brush number? Number 10. I'm using a number 10 and I'm using the Princeton Heritage. And I've been digging these brushes lately. Um, my other favorite is Silver Black Velvet. Okay. Barbara says, I'm joining late and watch the replay letter. What are the colors? Somebody may have already asked this already, but what are the colors on your palette? Okay, no worries, you just popped in. I'm using permanent rose, I'm using green gold, and I'm using some other greens. We did use this stormy blue. So we've got a pink, a dark blue, and a bunch of greens that we're using. Stan just shared, I'm learning with the Simple Artist Loft set to get started. Fantastic, fantastic Stan. That's a great way to get started and to start building your, to practicing your techniques. The Artist Loft set, you can pick one of those up at Michael's. They're really easy and affordable. 
super affordable. All right, I'm gonna come in and we're gonna do two more petals before we start to move to our green leafery. I'm gonna do this petal and this petal right here. So I've got quite a bit of pigment and I'm just following the line and I'm literally like drawing. You've seen me do this a couple times now. Clean off my brush, get all the pigment off my brush. Brush is wet, paper is wet, but it's clean and there's no pigment. I'm gonna use the water that's on my brush and just dab, 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 dance it along the edge and just pull that color over. And I'm just gonna pull away some color. Talking about highlights, see how I'm just pulling away some of that color to create a little bit of white right there. Oh, I'm loving that. Now I've got a little bit of a hard edge happening up here. As everything's drying, I'm not loving that. So look, just got my brush wet, just the tip of it, and I'm just gonna pull it out. And you can see me going back and forth and just brushing off the excess. And then that hard edge kind of goes away. I've got a little bit of a hard edge over here, but I kind of like the artistic look of it. So I'm gonna leave it. Maybe just kind of blend that up together a little bit. Cheryl just shared, hi Cheryl, favorite watercolor is the Paul Rubens and the Winsor Newton Cotman. Okay, friends, I didn't talk about Winsor Newton Cotman, but I'm gonna. Um, so Winsor Newton professional paint are amazing. They're amazing. I have a set that I've had for a very, very long time. I absolutely love them. I'm going to come in and start working on this petal right here while I talk about Winsor Newton. I absolutely love my artist set. Um, one of my favorite colors in the Winsor Newton line is Winsor Red. Oh, talk about a Christmas red. It is so beautiful. However, Winsor Newton is just really expensive. Really expensive. Now, the Winsor Newton Cotman line is really reasonably affordable, especially you can pick it up. Um, if you go to my Amazon storefront, I also have some Winsor Newton Cotman listed there. Um, and I love it. In my watercolor wonderland, look at that highlights that we've got there and some of that intensity. You're starting to see these petals kind of pop forward a little bit. Oh, I'm loving that. The Winsor Newton Cotman is really nice. It's a great set. So Stan, you're using Artist Loft to get started. A next step for you after Artist Loft would be probably like the Winsor Newton Cotman or a Paul Rubin set in, in that next price point up. Don't get the Winsor Newton Cotman from Michael's unless you have a coupon, honestly, because I feel like it's triple the price there. Um, and you can find deals on that. Now, a little, couple little hints I'm going to give you about Winsor Newton Cotman's professional, the Winsor Newton professional and the Cotman line. The Cotman line is in artist, um, technically a student grade. However, all right, we're going to start working on this petal while I'm talking about it. The permanent rose in the Winsor Newton Cotman and the permanent rose in the Winsor Newton professional line is almost virtually undetectable from each other. In my watercolor wonderland class, I actually showed that as an example um, to talk about artist grade versus student grade colors. There was virtually not much difference between those two colors. Um, and I love Permanent Rose from Winsor Newton. If there's a lot of interest, and pop it in the chat, if there's a lot of interest in me kind of breaking it down, um, breaking some of these watercolor brands down a little bit more in future tutorials, let me know. And I'll do that. Like I can focus some of the content specifically on some of the ins and outs of specific brands. But there are lots of channels on YouTube that do it. One of my favorite, you know, they do reviews. I don't do a lot of reviews of products. I'm more of a teachy person. But I will 
go into details about brands with you in the context of a project so you understand how it works, how, how that particular brand can work to your benefit. Donna just said, yes, please. So it would not necessarily be a review, but it would be kind of in the context of a paper, of a project. Oh, all right. I'm loving this. No worries, Barbara. Barbara had to pop out. Like I said, this tutorial is going to go over. We're probably into it for pro another, mm, I think, 20 minutes or so. We're getting close. I'm going to leave. You're welcome, Stan. I'm going to leave. I'm digging the way, except for right here. You see that little spot right there? I want to fix that. I am digging the way the petals are looking. So let's just do a quick review here. We've got these petals that are coming forward. We still see petals in the back. We've got all of this contrast happening with the negative painting. Now what's really not coming together in the painting right now are my two petals here. My leafery. So let's dive in. I'm going to come in with a little bit of a darker color, probably perylene green. So this perylene green, my brush is wet, my paper is dry. Ah, Barbara L just said, please include more reviews, watercolor reviews. Okay, that's good. Um, so there's interest in people learning a little bit more about brands in the context of a project. Love that. Love it. All right, I've got a little bit of this perylene green. This green is pretty intense. It's got a lot of black in it, but it's a really, really nice grounding color. And I really love the idea of that perylene green coming right up against this edge. It's a little scary, friends. Look at this, coming right up against this edge, but I got that green gold underneath it. Cheryl, oh, that would be a great way to see how each brand works. Yes. Okay. And I've said this before. I want to work a little bit quickly because I feel myself getting ready to nerd out a little bit. All right. I'm going to clean off my brush. And now I'm just going to start to pull some of that perylene green this way. Pull it this way. I want to keep that green gold happening here. But I'm just going to pull some of this perylene green so I get some definition between this petal and this petal and how it's reacting with the leafery. Hey, Mindy! Mindy just popped in. We're doing a pause and paint today, Mindy. We're painting. We're not making cards today. My pause and paints tend to be me not talking and tend to be me playing music, but that didn't happen. This whole thing has turned into... A watercolor tutorial and we're painting this poinsettia which is fun look at that darkness happening up against this petal here and here so we've got that negative painting happening and that contrast happening just like we have it happening right here I'm gonna come in with a little bit of that green gold pop that green gold right over here on the edges ah oh, thank you Mindy come down the bottom here Get a little bit of that perylene green. You see that? I don't want to lose the sharpness of the point, that piece of leafery right there. Ah! Mindy just got back from Christmas shopping. Holy smokes. I just finished wrapping everything on Sunday. It took me five or six hours. I was doing, I was like all day, but I like to, I like to wrap and it's fun. Just kind of revisiting the gifts that you buy. Okay. I've got that edge happening here. I'm digging the way that looks. This is really dark. I don't know how much I love that. So I'm just going to pull some of that away and I'm going to take my brush and just kind of lift it up and out and away. just to kind of tone it down a little bit. Let's pull in some of this green gold. 
just a little bit of green gold here. Mix these two colors together. And just, I've got a little bit of hard lines here in this leafery and I'm not digging it. So let's just pull it out and let them blend together a little bit. Come in, my brush is clean, just pull away a little bit to get a little bit of that white highlight. Ah, I love it. Okay, and we still have our line work here, so we've got that line and wash look. Now, where these two meet, we're almost, I'm gonna see what happens when that dries because we've got some dark here and dark here, but I'm gonna let it ride. Okay, so coming back to the nerding out part of our tutorial, let's go over here and focus a little bit of that perylene green right in here. So we get that definition of this petal, this petal, and this piece of leafery, and we get that 3D look. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of perylene green. Right there, come across. This is a lot, I've got a lot of paint on my brush. So the general consensus is that many of you would like to learn more about different watercolor brands and what they do, but out of the context of a review and more in the context of a project, which is fantastic. And it, it's very interesting. I will approach, just like we approach our stamping projects and our paper crafting projects, when we want to make something, we'll grab the supplies that we know can help us be most successful with what we've got going on in our head, what we're thinking about. This is really dark, so I'm going to start pulling some of this away. Same, same holds true with watercolor. Different brands behave differently. You would think it wouldn't be that way, but it is. Different brands behave differently and when I'm approaching a project, I think about what it is that I'm trying to achieve and I pick my brands accordingly. Now, I'm using Da Vinci today, Da Vinci paint, A, because I love supporting, I just love supporting um, American small businesses and Da Vinci is an American small business. Love that, loving the way that looks. Not loving this harsh line over here, so let's clean this brush. And the Da Vinci paints are predictable. I know what they're gonna do. I know how they're gonna react with water. I'm working with hot press paper today. I know that they work well with colored pencils, so I chose them. I chose them. Ah, Donna says, I think we should learn to set ourselves up for success. Yes, you would. So with um, talking about different supplies in the context of the kinds of projects that you do, it's gonna help you be more successful. All right, I'm pulling this out a little bit. I really do. All right, my brush is a little wet, but I did kind of pull that out a little bit. Now I'm gonna let that just do its thing. Let it be. All right, I am kind of, I'm digging, digging the way this looks. Loving this like little bit of white that we've got going on in here. Look at the contrast between the leafery and the petal here. Got a little bit of water going there. Let's just kind of make that go away. Um, I think we're getting very, very, very close to the end. There's one more petal. I feel two more petals. I feel like need a little bit of attention. Um, this one right here because we need a little bit of contrast between what's happening at the tip. And then I feel like I need to put a little bit of attention around the edge here. So let's go in a little bit more of that uh, permanent rose. Now permanent rose, let's talk about permanent rose as a color. It is a cool red. It's pink, but it's a cool red. I really, really love it. I love pink. I just love it. I mentioned earlier that I love Permanent Rose in many brands. And um, Da Vinci, I love it in Da Vinci. Okay, I'm gonna just take 
and just kind of pull this out a little bit and just kind of read this comment that we just got from Catherine. My laser printer printed in black. I stopped painting just to watch the rest. When I turned the piece over to dry the back, guess what? <laughs> On the back, there was a much fainter image, she said. So your black from your laser printer bled through. It's because we did wet it down quite a bit. I'm just going to pull this color over a little bit. I'm going to keep my whites happening right here between these two petals. I'm digging that. That's funny, Catherine, because look, you can't see any of the original um, line work. You can see my line work from the actual colored pencil work but you can't see any of the original um, printer work because it, it will fade away, uh, especially if you're using an inkjet printer, but you're using a laser printer, so that color bled through, that toner bled through the other side. Super fun. Okay, I'm gonna come in. I wanna do just a smidge of work right here. I've got quite a bit of pigment. I'm gonna come in and follow this line right here. I've got this really nice tip happening right there. Let's just go ahead and clean that up. Also, pop in the chat if there's a particular watercolor brand that you've been curious about so that I can maybe focus some attention in the new year on explaining it a little bit further. And friends, I have, like I said, I have a lot of brands of watercolor because I'm a naturally curious person and I've over the years I've tried virtually everything that's out there in the market ex with the exception of like you know some of the newer more um, kind of things that are popping up on Amazon that are very uh, cheap in nature. Like I'm not going to be investing in every single student grade piece watercolor that's come out because a lot of them are just repeats of things that are already existing. All right. I'm digging, I'm digging this the way this is looking. Now, one more thing. We've got a little bit of a hard edge right here. So yeah, pop in the chat, which brands that you've been curious about. All right, I'm going to come in, just kind of give this a quick dry because I think we're getting really, really close to being finished. With the exception of two things. I've got a lot of white going on over here. What I want to do is add a little bit of green right here. I'm just going to add just a smidge of green gold. I feel like I just need a little something happening there. Just a tinge of color. So I've got quite a bit there. I'm going to just come in and take some of it away. I just kind of want that white to not be so white. Now up here, same thing. Clean it off my brush, dabbing it, just grab a little bit of that permanent rose. Let's get the, let's get a little water in here. Grab a little bit of that permanent rose. Da Vinci is not one of those colors that runs, like whoosh runs usually stays right where you put it. That's one of the reasons why I love it for, for working with hot press paper because it usually stays where I put it and then it allows me some opportunity to work with it. Okay. Uh, Catherine just shared, I like more information on metallic watercolors like Altenu or Lulu on black. Okay. No problem. We'll check out the 2020 video. We've talked a lot about the black watercolor paper um, and metallics. I've got a lot of metallics. I think we're just going to end up having to do something metallic and fun in the new year. Uh, Monica just said, how about uh, Kuretake Gunzai Tambai? Yep. Love them. I'll bring them out. We can talk about them in a future video as well. All right. I'm just going to just get this nice and dry. Now look at that. What? We still have our abstract feel to this, but we can see some detail in our petals. And it's almost like when you're looking down into the center 
of this poinsettia, it's like you can feel the layers that are happening there. Stan just said, it's so beneficial seeing your products on Gina K and then subscribing to your channel. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. We have a new release coming out January 16th. Mindy will correct me if I'm wrong. I think I just found that out yesterday. We found out yesterday that January 16th is going to be the new release. I'm super excited for this next one. I know I say that every single release, but I am really super excited about this next one. Talk about a ton of watercolor techniques that I'm going to share with this next stamp set. Super fun. All right, but back to our poinsettia. Loving the way this looks. Loving the watercolor. Now, everything's dry. Let me just make sure. We're going to come, yeah, I'm going to come in with a little bit more heat here. Now, remember how I talked about glazing and jacking up the luminosity of your watercolor project by adding layers and drying them in between. Look at the luminosity of this project. Again, you can see the layers. <laughs> Mindy just said January 16th, that was right. Look at the layers. Now, we're gonna come in with a little bit of the watercolor, not the watercolor pencil, the colored pencil, a little bit of the red, and I'm just going to enhance a few things. I'm going to come in over top. Now, the reason why I like working with the hot press paper is because it really takes our watercolor pencil really nicely. And I'm just going to take this red and go over some of the edges where we have a little bit of our darker watercolor. And you can see I'm holding this pencil out, like way out here. And here's why. I'm very heavy handed. When I hold a pencil or a colored pencil really, really tight, I tend to mash into the paper. I really just want some light strokes of color. So I'm holding it out. And this is also adding a little bit of texture. It's adding some intensity to the color in the areas that I want it to. Adding some texture. I could have gone in with a fourth layer of watercolor, but I really like this idea of mixing my mediums and adding a little bit more with color pencil. See how I'm just coming out a little bit here into, let's pop in, let's see if we can, uh, I need to come in a little tighter here so you can kind of see. Let's come in a little tighter. See how we've got a little bit of that color and I'm just, it's sitting on top of the surface. So you get a little bit of texture and we get a little bit more of an intensity of color. I'm just lightly brushing this on, not brushing, lightly applying it. So the colored pencil is just kind of picking up and sitting on top. I'm not going in really, really deep. Just adding a little bit. And my voice is getting softer because that's kind of how it feels, adding this in. <laughs> Sand just said wallet ready. Oh, the entire January release is going to be amazing. Monica said this looks pretty realistic. You know what? It's funny because it kind of does look a little bit real, more realistic than I thought it was going to look. So remember, like here is my original look that the intensity of color is a lot more improved in this design versus this design. So look, you can do something with the same techniques and it can look completely different each time you do it, which is, that's what I love about it. We've got a lot of depth. You're right, Catherine, we have a lot of depth. All right, I'm going to come in with a little bit of this pine green and just do the same thing. Just in a couple of these areas right here. I'm going to, I'm pulling out pretty far. I've got a lot of like light yellow green happening here. I'm going to add a little bit of this pine green right in this area to just kind of tone down some of the yellowness. Friends, I am sorry that we have gone over an hour, 
Um, and those of you who are still with me, thank you. But this ended up turning into a full-on class <laughs> tutorial, right? Mindy just asked, what watercolor pencils are these? I think I'm missing it in the description. Okay, Mindy, I'm not using watercolor pencils. These are polychromos, Faber-Castell. These are colored pencils. I didn't use watercolor pencils because we were, uh, I wanted to retain our line work with the color pencils and the water would move it. All right, I'm loving this, loving, loving, loving this. We're gonna come in with some bleed proof white. And I was thinking about this, like do I even wanna add this bleed proof white? Do I even wanna add this white? Yes, I do, because it's gonna dial up the whimsy a little bit more. I'm just gonna come into my dark areas and add this little tiny bit of bleed proof white. This is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I've had this jar ugh, forever. I think 20 years now I've had this jar. It has gotten, it's dried out a couple times. It's gotten gunky. You just add a little bit of water and it still keeps on going. You could use white acrylic paint if you don't have Bleed Proof White. You could use white gouache. You're just looking for something that is white and opaque. If you have a watercolor set that has white in it, you could use that too. A lot of paper crafters use this white. Mindy just said it's the best white, she's right. It's the best because this little jar will last you forever. It's like a legacy product. You'll end up handing it down to someone else. I'm gonna add a little bit of white here and here Loving the way that looks. Loving this. Now, I'm going to come in and just add a little bit of white to my centers. Just to dial up the whimsy. And then we're going to pull away. I'm going to resist the urge to keep going. And I'm going to leave this and call it done. Which brings me to my last question last question that I've received. How do you know when you're finished? How do you know when you're finished? Cheryl just said, could you use the ink tense white? Absolutely. You could absolutely use ink tense white. You could use the pencil. You could use any of the ink tense products. You would love it. So here's the answer to my question. How do you know when you're finished your painting? Friends, I don't always know because sometimes I just keep going and going and I'm trying things and I'm curious of what's going to happen and I end up making mud or it ends up looking janky. Now, how do I know? In this case, I'm really feeling like this composition is finished. I've got a lot of definition between my petals. My negative painting looks solid. Look at how these petals up here are really popping forward. We've got red and our green petals that are popping. We get the sense that there's something in the front and there's something in the back. And when you look down in the center of this flower, we can see layers. We've got that illusion of layers. So even though there isn't a ton of realism with the detail, like in the veins and adding that kind of botanical realism, we definitely have the look and feel of this poinsettia coming to life. So as I was creating it and as we're building the layers up from that washy first layer to adding those details, those kinds of instincts are going to come to you the more you practice. And that's how you're going to know it's done. When I did this one, like I felt like it was done, but when I look at it now compared to this one, I feel like I can go back to this one and I can add even another layer to add a little bit more definition. But I'm going to leave it because that was then, this is now. If I painted this again, it would probably look completely different. Completely different. Irma just asked a quick question. Can you use any white paint for splattering? Absolutely. I could have totally used this bleed proof white and did a huge splatter with it. But again, if you don't have this product in your stash, 
You probably have white acrylic. You could totally use that. Um, just experiment. But if you are looking to invest in something, the Bleed Proof White, like I said, I've had this for like 20 years and I've barely scratched the surface. Now it is pretty dry in there, but you literally just add a little bit more water and it'll come back to life. Ah, Stan just said, thank you, Lisa. I experimented with Derwent Intense Pencils and Blocks. Just have to practice more. <laughs> My husband won't slow down long enough to learn. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Okay. All right, friends. Popping back to the front camera. Thanks so much for joining me today. We were, the pause and paint that was supposed to be an hour turned into an hour and a half full on class. So if you're watching this on the replay, Feel free to pause along the way, do the techniques, ask any questions that you have, pop them in the comments, and I'm going to come back in and answer them. Okay, friends. Uh, Donna just asked another quick question. Do you need to seal your watercolor painting? So that's a really great question. You can if you want to. Um, if you're going to use your painting like raw, like if you're going to mount it onto something and it's not going to be behind glass or something like that, um, you can seal it. And I'll go back in the comments. Um, I'll go back in and list a good uh, Krylon brand that you can spray on. But if you're going to mat it and put it behind glass, you don't really, you don't need to seal it. Okay but your paints do matter. So if you're using like a craft brand of paint, or if you're using like, in this case, like an artist loft, or you're using an art, a student grade, the light fastness of the watercolor matters. I'm using Da Vinci, super light fast. So if this sat in the light, you know, if it sat with some intense sun on it, it isn't going to fade. Some watercolors will fade. Dye inks will fade. Things will fade. Okay. Irma, um, I hope that answered the question. Everybody's saying simply beautiful. Merry Christmas to everyone. Irma, white gel pen. Yes, absolutely. Um, Cheryl said sealing and using a mask would be another good thing to learn how to do for our work. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm adding all these great ideas that we've come up with today to my list of things as we move into 2024 and all of the wonderful content I want to share with you all on this channel. Okay, friends, we are going to close today. I am going to, um, I'm just so grateful you could join me. Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy holidays. I hope that you have a wonderful holiday weekend. Um, we're heading into 2024. It's almost hard to believe this year just kind of really blew by. Next week, I think I will be back next Thursday. And I'm going to share, I had planned this before we even all agreed to this. I plan to share some watercolor that is granulating. I want to talk about granulating watercolors and how you can use them in your paintings and your paper crafting projects and what they can do. So I'm going to talk about a couple different brands and I'm going to kind of just show. I'm going to have a little show and tell about granulating watercolors. If you're on my email list, you'll get that information, but I probably will be going live next Thursday um, around our same time, 11 o'clock. Um, okay, friends. Ah, it was such a great day. I have so much joy from just painting this poinsettia. Um, and I hope if you painted along, you had a lot of fun too. Okay. We're going to sign off. Have a fantastic holiday weekend. I'll see everybody next week. Don't forget, you can subscribe to my email list. All of that information is down below in the description. The supplies I used today are down below in the description. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I will answer them. And I'll see you next week, friends. Merry Christmas. Okay, bye now.